بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد fasting is a shield from the hellfire and gaining God fearfulness is what fasting encourages. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladinu min qablikum la'allakum tattakum. We've prescribed for you fasting, or it was written for you, or prescribed for you fasting. Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladinu min qablikum. As it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a means to gaining that beautiful attribute of taqwa, taqwa Allah azza wa jal, which we all crave, we all desire to uh, obtain, or we should desire to obtain as a Muslim, to gain taqwa, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depths of the evening when we're by ourselves, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day when people are watching us and when people are not watching us. So we want to gain that God fearfulness and consciousness that we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. We know Allah sees us. We know Allah is aware of all that we do. We know Allah is sami'un basir, that he hears and, and sees everything. We can't hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that can be obtained by taqwa. And, that, and, and the, the evidence for that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that fasting is prescribed for you, similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would become God conscious, you would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting is a means to gain God consciousness. By fasting, restraining ourselves, we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's ibadah and we become conscious and fearful of Allah, and may Allah bless us all to gain that during the holy month of Ramadan and after Ramadan to implement that in our lives, in our regular routine. So fasting is also a shield. It's a shield from the hellfire, to protect you from the hellfire. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الصوم جنة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that fasting is a shield. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said fasting is a shield. So the ulama they mention that fasting it is a shield from the hellfire. And this is because restraining from desires, from shahwat, those things you desire, and the hellfire is surrounded by desires, shahwat. So by restraining yourself and, you know, restraining oneself from their desires, they are putting a shield because hellfire is surrounded by desires. The more you engage in desires, the more you are, uh, the more you gain in desires in an unlawful way, the more you are tampering with your prospects to go uh, to escape the hellfire. Because the hellfire is surrounded by those things which we desire. For example, when people, uh, as we all have uh, our innate drives and attractions to different things, whether it be wealth, whether it be uh, for us as men to be attracted to women and to be excessive in that. We're not saying to in, in, the, in the bond of marriage, but we're talking about beyond the bond of marriage. Men have a tendency to be attracted to women and look and have difficulty restraining themselves, and everyone's at a different level. Some men are able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lower their gaze. Some men are unable to do that. Some men are tested with looking at 
women. Some men are tested with looking at pornography. Some men and women are tested with all of those things. And some even tested to another level where they're tested with committing uh, adultery and fornication and so forth. And with this, this test, that shows us if we have an inclination towards that, that's our desires. Those are the things that surround the hellfire. So by restraining those desires, we are placing a shield between us and the hellfire. Because those things lead us to the hellfire. As Allah mentions that the children of Adam, that they uh, are tested and they love the they have desires for women and they have desires to have lots of children you know lots of progeny to carry their name and lots of wealth gold and silver and this is evidence to show that those things they when we desire them in excess that they can become sinful and a means to our destruction but when we desire them with the right balance then they can be a lot of good and we can benefit from those things in this life. So, as the scholars mention, that when a person is restraining their desires, that they are putting up a shield between themselves and the hellfire. And then it was mentioned that if a person restrains his or herself from those desires in this life, it is as if they are putting up a curtain or a hijab or a barrier of some type between them and the hellfire in the hereafter. So by restraining yourself in this life, from excess, from excess and muharram, those things which are impermissible, you're putting up a barrier between, or a shield between you and the hellfire in the hereafter. And this is the belief and system of the Muslim. And this is the way of the mu'min, if someone wants to become a believer, someone who's, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts all of our good and forgives all of our evil and blesses us all to fast the holy month of Ramadan and the Muslims everywhere to gain benefit and relief from their various struggles, from the war, from famine, from hardship and difficulty. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the non-Muslims to become Muslim. And we pray for that and we hope for that. And all of this is in the hands of Allah Rabbil Alameen. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.